All right, we want to take you to the White House, where President Trump is meeting with Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards as that state uh, extends its stay-at-home order. Let's take a listen. 1,090-plus individuals. So it is the first truly high-powered, randomized, placebo-controlled trial. It was an international trial involving multiple sites, not only in the United States, but in various countries throughout the world, including Germany, Denmark, Spain, Greece, the UK, et cetera. The primary endpoint was the time to recovery, namely the ability to be discharged. When you have a study like this, we have a data and safety monitoring board, which looks at the data. And they are independent, so there's no prejudice on the part of the investigators because they're doing the trial or the drug is from a certain company. The Data and Safety Monitoring Board on Monday afternoon contacted me on April 27th, first on Friday, the week before, and then again on April 27th, and notified the study team, namely the multiple investigators who are doing the study throughout the world, that the data shows that remdesivir has a clear-cut, significant, positive effect in diminishing the time to recovery. This is really quite important for a number of reasons, and I'll give you the data. It's highly significant. If you look at the time to recovery being shorter in the remdesivir arm, it was 11 days compared to 15 days. And that's a p-value for the scientists who are listening of 0 0.001. So that's something that, although a 31 percent improvement, doesn't seem like a knockout 100%. It is a very important proof of concept because what it is proven is that a drug can block this virus. And I'll give you an example in a moment of why we think, looking forward, this is very optimistic. The mortality rate trended towards being better in the sense of less deaths in the remdesivir group, 8% versus 11% in the placebo group. It has not yet reached statistical significance, but the data needs to be further analyzed. The reason why we're making the announcement now is something that I believe people don't fully appreciate. Whenever you have clear-cut evidence that a drug works, you have an ethical obligation to immediately let the people who are in the placebo group know so that they could have access. And all of the other trials that are taking place now have a new standard of care. So we would have normally waited several days until the data gets further, the dot the I and cross the T. But the data are not going to change. Some of the numbers may change a little, but the, but the conclusion will not change. So uh, when I was looking at this data with our team the other night, it was reminiscent of 34 years ago in 1986 when we were struggling for drugs for HIV. And we had nothing. And there was a lot of anecdotal reports about things that maybe did work, maybe not. People were taking different kinds of drugs. And we did the first randomized placebo-controlled trial with AZT, which turned out to give an effect that was modest. But that was not the end game, because building on that every year after, we did better and better. We had better drugs of the same type, and we had drugs against different targets. This drug happens to be blocking a enzyme that the virus uses, and that's an RNA polymerase. But there are a lot of other enzymes that the virus uses that are now going to be targets for this. This will be the standard of care. And in fact, when we look at the other trials we're doing, we were going to do trial with another uh, 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 antiviral. Actually, it isn't an antiviral. It's an anti-inflammatory, uh, a monoclonal antibody. We're going to now compare the combination of remdesivir with this. So as drugs come in, we're going to see if we could add on that. So bottom line, uh, you're going to be hearing more details about this. This will be submitted to a peer-reviewed journal and will be peer-reviewed appropriately. But we think it's really a, a opening the door to the fact that we now have the capability of treating. And I can guarantee you, as more people, more companies, more investigators get involved, it's going to get better and better. So I'll stop there, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Does that make you more comfortable? Uh, why don't you go first, and then you go. Does any of this data change the timeline and the development of a vaccination? No, no. Originally no, this has nothing to do with vaccines. This is treatment for people who are already infected. Vaccines is to prevent infection in those who are at risk. Do you have new data on vaccines? 
No, nothing more than that. what I continue at the press conferences that we have regularly, keep you up to date, that everything is on track with the phase one study. We're in the third part of it. We're going to go into phase two in the summer. But nothing has changed that anything I've said when we had press conferences. Tell me, they're writing a lot about Oxford. We know Johnson & Johnson yeah. is well advanced. another candidate, another one of several candidates that are moving along. Because we're going to have a lot of shots on goal when it comes to vaccines. That's good. Yeah. That's, good. That's great.